2020 webinar. My name is Rebecca White. I'm the Marketing Project Manager here at AI Squared. And today's webinar is geared toward teachers. Um, we're almost at that back to school time. Some of us might already be back to school. So this webinar is, while it's geared toward teachers, this is also very applicable to anybody who uses ZoomText themselves or trains others on how to use ZoomText. So this is going to be kind of, it's, it's across the board. We're going to cover all kinds of different things from features to differences in our licensing to just some general settings. Um, so there's a lot, <laughs> a lot for me to talk about today. So um, I am going to get right into it. And if you do have questions during the webinar, everyone is muted right now, so I can't hear you talking. Um, but if you do have a question and you want to make sure you remember it at the end of the webinar, you can certainly type that into the chat window. Or there's also a questions area of the GoToWebinar software interface that you can type your question in there, and I will get to it at the end of the webinar. So what I'm going to do here is basically kind of bounce back and forth between this PowerPoint presentation and then actually showing you a live demonstration of these top 20 things that I'm going to talk about. Um, and it, I did just want to mention that a lot of this webinar is going to assume that you've got some knowledge of the different features within ZoomText. So if I mention a feature that you have no idea what I'm talking about, please make sure you ask at the end or know that we have a ton of other webinars that go over, go over you know, other features more in depth. Okay, so the first four things are all features that I'm going to talk about. So one is to quickly turn ZoomText on and off. Frequently, either you are not visually impaired and you're working with someone who is, or vice versa and you need a quick way to just turn that Zoom text on and off. Another top thing is to know how to quickly adjust the magnification level, because occasionally some, some things are just too small. You go to a certain website, and usually 2x works OK for you, but you get to this website, and you really need to bump it up a bit. I'm going to give you some ways to quickly adjust. The next one is how you can launch AppReader right exactly where you want it to start reading. And then we're going to show you the differences between AppReader and DocReader, which are two of the main reading tools in ZoomText. OK, so we're going to go over those four things. So right here, we have our ZoomText user interface. And right now, ZoomText is actually disabled. The way that I know that is this first button here is gray. And to quickly enable it, I'm going to press Alt-Insert. On my Zoom keyboard. text enabled. And it immediately comes back to life, so to speak, and now everything is magnified. To quickly disable, I'm going to press Alt-Delete on the keyboard. So for each of these main things, I'm going to try to give you a keyboard, or we call them hotkeys, which are really the quickest way. Um, when you learn a few key ones, it can really speed along your, your efficiency during the day. But there's also always a way to use the mouse and access this as well. So actually, this very first button, if I click it, Zoom text enabled. that's kind of like an on-off switch. So those are the quick ways to turn Zoom text on and off. And I do want to mention, I have all of this information that I'm talking about in a relatively long Word document um, that I will um, share with everyone who is attending the webinar today. So you're welcome to take notes as I'm talking, but you will get a, a pretty detailed Word document after this webinar as well. OK, number two, quickly adjusting magnification. There are several ways that you can do this. You can hold down the Control key. And if you have a mouse that has a scroll wheel in the middle, you just move 1. it 5. up and down. 1, 1x, 1. 1.5x. And it will adjust. So that's one way if you've got one of those scroll wheel mice. Another way using the keyboard is pressing the Alt key. And on the number pad, either plus or minus. 6x. So I'm, I am continually pressing X. plus and minus, and it will zoom in and out per you know each step. So it goes up Magnifi according to power. all these steps that you see here. Setting, magnifier, power. So this is actually another way that you can adjust the magnification. You go up to the magnifier menu, 
choose the first item, which is power, and you'll see an entire One mix next. of all of the options that are available to you. The next way mm -hmm. is there's actually a little up and down arrow buttons next to this power spin box here, and if you just click them up and down, two, two, three, four X, th two, two X. it does the same thing. So that's another way, there's three way, four ways really, <laughs> to adjust the magnification. Number three, launching app reader right where you want it to read. So if I open up a web page here, let's open up our Zoom blog. It. And let's say, you know, I'm, I'm not all that interested in that first article. No, nope, don't want that one either. But, oh, Vancouver. I want to hear about this. So if I just launched AppReader with the normal hotkey, which is Alt-Shift-A for AppReader, it would actually start at the very top of the page, which is not always where you want it to start reading. So to launch AppReader, the most precise way that you can is by pressing Alt and Shift and then simply left clicking your mouse. So I'm going to hold those down and press on the word my. My daughter, Arden, and I recently traveled to Vancouver, British Columbia, with other... And I just hit the pause key by pressing enter. And I'm going to escape out. But you can see how that's very useful. App Reader started reading right exactly where I wanted it to read. So if I had used Alt-Shift-A, I'm going to show you the difference. App Reader tool. I have no idea where it is. It, it's actually, I'd have to click again and to start it reading. So instead of it being as easy as possible by just pressing Alt-Shift and clicking, you know, here you go again. I'm going to choose this word context. Context as you zoom in on your target area. Area. So that's a really handy way to very quickly launch the very useful tool AppReader. And speaking of AppReader, our number four is what are the differences between App Reader and Doc Reader? So in App Reader, we call it that because it actually keeps you in the application that you're in, and it highlights along as you um, hopefully just saw. It highlights that, that little red box that um, goes around the word that it's reading. It's really great for on the web where you want to, for instance, you want to keep seeing this picture that goes along with this article. You just want to keep yourself right in the program that you're in, hear it reading until you're done, and then you escape out by pressing the escape key. Doc Reader, on the other hand, so that will take all of the text it can find, pull it out, and put it in its own high contrast window. So I'm going to show you what that would look like on the web. Now Doc Reader is not actually the best tool to use on the web, so I'm going to show you why right now by pressing Alt-Shift-D. So here we have the Doc Reader window, and this literally pulls any text that it can find. So it pulled from the top of our blog, if I go to our ticker window here. Ticker mode. So it actually, if Divisions. I scroll up a smidge here. The Dory's two. Keep going. So, I mean, it pulls text from the sidebar. It pulls the text from Power. the top where it has the different categories. I mean, it pulls absolutely everything. So I'm going to exit out of exit. this for a minute and show you that if you're in a document, um, which is why we call it Doc Reader, it's really Gaze. best for documents. So if you have, this is just a Word file here, we can certainly use App Reader. There's no, no reason why we can't. But if we use Doc Reader here, Alt-Shift-D, I'm going to put it back to prompter, prompter view, mode. so it takes up Teacher. our whole screen, and it's, it strips out any sort of confusing or very ornate formatting. Everything looks exactly how you want it to look. You can even go in Prompt here and change the font that's used, the size, the color, so you can really make this look exactly how you want it to do. So, so again, the, the key differences are AppReader keeps you where you are in the application, DocReader strips out any formatting and ads and all that other things and um, pulls it into its own interface here for make for some easy reading without having any sort of visual noise. It also just will scroll up and down 
unlike Wolt App Reader, we'll have to scroll you side to side to see the rest of that, the web page. This is just a, a scrolling window up and down. Be so all of your text of is here. So you can see it all. Done. And it just makes it, it's a little bit easier because that screen isn't doing as much movement. So again, it's all based on personal preference. You can use either tool wherever. But usually App Reader is better on the web, and Doc Reader is better for documents. OK, I'm going to exit out of this. And I'm just going to quickly disable Alt-Delete. Switch back here to my PowerPoint. In our next slide, the next four things we're going to go over are Background Reader. So with App Reader and Doc Reader, you're sort of, in a way, you're stuck listening as it highlights along and reads to you. But sometimes you want to be able to multitask, or you just want to be able to go about and do anything else on the computer. You don't want it to be highlighting you know, as it's reading. So that we're going to show you how you can multitask with Background Reader. The next thing, it's, it's not really a feature, because I'm going to give you multiple features here, but effectively using Zoom text on the web is a big, big thing that people want to know how to do. The web is, is everywhere nowadays, so being able to effectively access it, even though you're visually impaired, is, is a key, key thing to know how to do. Another feature here is the freeze window. So if you always want to know what time it is, or let's say you're in Excel and you really want to keep just one cell always in your view, freeze window is a great way to do that. The last one here, number eight, is turning color enhancements on and off just using a hotkey. This is great when students or you are looking at images. They don't always look very good when a, with a color enhancement on. People kind of tend to look like aliens a little bit. Um, so knowing how to turn that on and off really quickly is a helpful tip. All right, so let's get back to our live demonstration here. OK, so background reader. Let's, let's use this Word document here. Let's turn Zoom text back on. Zoom text enter. enabled. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to teach you a couple handy hotkeys that will help you even speed up your, your efficiency even more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the text in this article. And I'm going to copy it to my clipboard using Control-C. And now I'm going to press the Background Reader hotkey, which is Caps Lock C. And that's going to start reading immediately whatever is in my clipboard. Okay, so caps lock, C. The Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent yeah. a new nation. I can go about in and liberty and dedicated to the proposition bit. that all men are created right, equal. You're lower zoom text. It's now still reading, are engaged in but you'll see that it actually war, pops up its own little school bar, so I can pause. I can play. navigate by sentence, by word, play. Um, play. but I can also do anything else on the computer. It's not highlighting, but it is reading that entire document. Whatever I put in that clipboard, it's reading it from start to finish. So I'm just going to hit play again and show you that I can go go check my email, I can go online, I can do whatever. Play. Okay? And so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, no, we cannot dedicate, enter, we cannot consecrate, we cannot the hallow reading. the scrap. OK, so Function. background reader has stopped talking. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find a little bit of text here, maybe this paragraph. Love it or loathe it. EW debates Taylor Swift's shake it off vertical bar. The music Isn't makes vertical bar EW.com okay. when this internet So I'm just selecting this first paragraph. I'm not copying it, just selecting it. And I'm going to press the background reader hotkey, which is caps lock S. Comment 62 Taylor Swift dropped some big news yesterday. Her forthcoming album 1989 inspired caps lock, by the Enter to pause. OK, so caps lock S will actually immediately start reading your selected text. So you save yourself a little step. You don't have to actually paste any or copy anything to your clipboard. It will just pull that new content for you. To exit Background Reader entirely, we're going to press Caps Lock Escape. Background Reader closed. So it'll announce to you the Background Reader is now closed. 
So that's a really handy way to just free yourself up a little bit to be able to do other things or to just eliminate all that, the visual, you know, the screen moving around as it's reading an app reader and doc reader. Okay, now we're going to talk about effectively using Zoom text on the web. Zoomed in. The AI. first question that's asked very frequently is what internet browser should I be using? So depending upon your Zoom text version, you have to be using a very specific version of your internet browser as well. So for instance, if you have Zoom text 10.1 and you're in Windows 8, you can be using Internet Explorer 10, 11, or any version of Firefox. If you're using our pre-release 10.1 for Windows 7, you can actually use any version of IE from 8 to 11 or any version of Firefox. For Zoom Text 10 users, which is actually what I'm running here, you need to use Internet Explorer 9 or older or any version of Firefox. Zoom Text 9.1, Internet Explorer 8 or older, as well as any version of Firefox. Okay, I'm not going to go back any further than that. We're not going to go to version one of Zoom Text, not to worry. Um, so those are the three, you know, that I would say within the last 10 years, those three were the versions out. So, you know, if you have a, a follow-up question, if you've got version five of Zoom Text, uh, first of all, I'd recommend you upgrade. But um, if you want to know what version um, of Internet Explorer you should be using, support can certainly help you with that too. So what are some tools for the web? So we've already gone over App Reader. It's a great tool for reading on the web. We also have another reading tool for the web that's called Speak It Tool. And this is really nice for just some spot reading. So if you didn't really want the whole article to be read to you with App Reader, and you just had a little area on screen that looked kind of interesting, you can launch the Speak It Tool. And you do this with the hotkey Alt Shift I. So I'm going to do that right now. Speak It Tool. Zoom Text will announce to you that the Speak It Tool is open. My mouse pointer now has this little speech bubble attached to it. That lets me know that I'm in a tool mode. And if I didn't mean to get into this, I can just hit Escape or right click my mouse. But what this lets me do is I can scroll around what, whatever's on screen here and just left click my mouse and drag over a section of text that looks interesting. So let's just let go of the mouse right here. Teens, teens arrested in plot after web activities eyed Washington Post. One hour ago, South Pasadena, Calif. Two high school students suspected of plotting a school massacre in a Los Angeles suburb were arrested after investigators monitored their internet activities and determined they presented a real threat, police said Tuesday. So it basically, it'll read and, it, and again, it's not highlighting. So this is just good for a little quick spot reading tool um, to let you kind of say, you know, what does it say here? World, world. Okay. And when you want to get out of it, right click and you're out. So it's a really handy, quick spot reading tool called Speak It. We also have a tool called the Recorder that lets you take web content or any content really with you when you're on the go. So you can always, you know, queue up a whole bunch of news articles and listen to them on your commute home, for instance, or on your bus ride home. Um, it's a really handy extension of ZoomText, so when you're away from your computer, you can still take it with you. So I'm going to press um, Control, Caps Lock C, and what this will do is take that content that I had already placed in my clipboard, and it's going to record that for me. So Control. Caps lock C. Zoom text recorder. Track name comments. Now I probably Taylor do not really need to listen to the Taylor Swift paragraph that I copied uh, later when I'm away from my computer, but you never know. Um, and what this does is it lets you either just save it as a file. Record text to. You can file. also just send it directly to iTunes. It puts it in its own playlist. It's a really, really fast and easy way to take files with you. You can sync up your recordings to your iPhone or your iPad before you leave to get on the bus, to get, you know, on your commute home. And it's a really nice way to be able to still listen, you know, while you're while you're on the go. So again, we do have many other um, videos that, that talk about the recorder and show you exactly how to do it. 
um, in more depth, but this we're trying to hit the hot spots right now. So my last um, tool for you for the web is called Web Finder. And what this is, is it's a really nice way to, let me open up our blog. Google again. News Dash Windows Inter Zoom. Okay. Maximize that. Okay. So when you're on the web, it, it can be very challenging when you're visually impaired to find what you're looking for or to just try to, you, you can't really visually scan the page. Like let's say that my Zoom level 4X. is usually 4X. I mean, you don't see hardly anything on screen at one time. So it can be very hard to know, well, I'm really looking for information on Zoomtex Mac and this, I, I don't know where it is. I mean, it's hard, it's hard. So we have a tool called Web Finder and to open that up, I'm gonna use the hotkey Control Shift D. Search I'm for sorry, Control Zoom Shift Tech W. <laughs> that was Desktop Zoom Finder. Web Finder. So Web Finder brings up, again, its own toolbar here. There's a lot of things that we can do in here. First thing I'm going to do is search for something I'm looking for. Zoom Text. So if I'm looking for Zoom Text Mac, and I just say, take me to that next Zoom instance. Text Mac Tips and Tricks. Reading Take email with right web. to it. And because this is actually a link, I can execute that link so it would open up this new page for me. I can start App Reader from here, or I can just keep searching. Maybe that wasn't quite what I was looking for. Or I can open up web. this list view and I can see all of the instances of Zoom Text Mac on this page. And I see this one here Zoom and I think Mac tips yep, tricks that's ready right. email. I'm gonna Dave, let's let's take me to where that is. Zoom text Mac tips and tricks. There it is, right there. So from here, I'm going to execute that. Zoom in the AI squared blog, Windows Internet Explorer. And it opens up the new page for me. This is the individual blog post. It's not the entire blog. And from here, I can also zoom content. Just I can decide, I can do another search. Maybe this you know didn't quite narrow down enough for me. Maybe I wanted to know about um, is there anything on here about reading from the clipboard? Let's see. Doesn't look like it. So it will. It's it's a really nice way search. to to Internet Explorer oh, cancel. Oh, this is. Oh goodness gracious! No, we don't want to open this up. I accidentally clicked Zoom our contact. our Zoom contacts link. So let's. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so again, Web Finder is a nice way to cut down on the clutter of websites. So let's do another example. Okay, let's go to Navigation. another website that tends to be extremely v -C. visually noisy. So CNN.com. You might be doing some research for an upcoming paper on this page. You might just want to be checking out the, the news headlines. Okay, so on this page, now the news can be very depressing, so we're just gonna look for something maybe a little positive on this page. Web so find. let's try to find something about, let's see, the ice bucket challenge that seems to be everywhere these days. So if I just press enter. Ice bucket fundraiser dies. Okay, Link. well I thought we were going to have some pleasant news, but apparently not. Um, Let's hit it Ice again. bucket fundraiser dies. Image contains link. Web finder, web finder, web ice well, bucket fund. That apparently appears to be the only instance of that on this page. Um, let's try something else. Um, let's see. Let's look for is there anything yeah. about Apple today? And when that is yellow, that indicates that there is actually nothing on here about Apple. So let's try something else. Let's look for. Anything to do with baseball? Nope. Apparently not either. Um, let's see, let's see. Baseball. Hmm. Well, I did sort of, <laughs> thank goodness. I. All right, let's try to get something good going on here. So, JK. I do see that J.K. Rowling, who's one of my favorite authors with Harry Potter, she is apparently talking about something new here, a little known witch in her world of Harry Potter. So you know what? I want to read that. Let's execute that. It's going to open up that new page for me. And now I can read about that. 
Or I could start App Reader here and do an Alt Shift click and skip, you know, all this these images and ads and all of that and just start it right here. App Reader error the text web find CNN.com breaking news. There we the go. wonderful array of characters and names in the Harry Potter universe are on. Okay. So you get the idea. Web Reader is a really powerful tool that combines a lot of different things. Searching the web, actually executing links, just narrowing stuff down in a world where it can be very, very busy and very noisy on the web. Okay. So our next tip is Do we next. wanted to talk about the freeze window. So when you're using Zoom Text and you're magnified, you don't always, you're not going to be able to see everything on screen. And one of the common things that, that people like to know by looking down in the bottom left hand, right hand corner is what time it is. So if I activate the freeze window by pressing Control Shift N. Freeze window tool activated. What I'm going to do is left click and drag my mouse over this um, time of day. I can then move it if maybe I want it to be in the upper right hand corner. Maybe that's better for me. So when I'm done, I just hit the escape key and I'm done. And this is now, it's not a snapshot. It, this is a live area of the screen. So if I move my mouse here, you're going to see it up in that upper right hand corner as well, which is useful because we don't we're not trying to take a snapshot of the time. We don't always want to see it's 328 and we realize it's 8 p.m. and we're still at work. We don't want that to happen. So this is a live area of the screen that is dynamic. It will change, but it's just a nice way to keep something that you always want to see on the screen. Again, another very common way to use this is in Excel. When you're doing a lot of work in spreadsheets, let's say you've got some complicated math that you're doing and you really want to make sure you see that total always and how it's impacting the numbers that you're entering, how it impacts that total, do a freeze window and put that, that specific cell in that freeze window so then you'll always see it. Another handy hotkey is to turn freeze window on and off. So I'm going to press Control Shift E. Freeze window disabled. And it's gone. And if I press it again, freeze window enabled. It's back. It will bring back that last one that I did. If I want a new one, then we do the control shift N and it would bring me a new freeze window tool. Freeze window okay. disabled. Now, while we're on this page here, which has some photographs, if I had my color enhancements on, which I can do Zoom text user here in the user interface. Okay, I'm going to pick one of the schemes. Invert, invert brightness is one that's commonly used. Um, for something like address. in a Word document. It can be really nice to have white text on a black background. However, when we Zoom go back to Harry our Potter. Harry CNN. Potter com article, news. Harry Potter looks frightening. He looks possessed right here. So, you know, that the, the color enhancement tools are wonderful except on photographs. So if you're looking through a bunch of photos, let's say you've got some emails or you're just you want to see what the photo looks like that accompanies an article you're reading. You just press the handy hotkey, Control Shift C for color enhancements. Color enhancements. And it will disabled. toggle them on and off. Color enhancement. Color enhancements. So that's a really quick, quick and easy hotkey to definitely know. Okay, I'm going to disable, and we're going to go back to our PowerPoint. Okay. All right, we've got a couple of things here that don't require a live demo. So one thing is we've got four different license types for Zoom Text. Single user license. We're switching car insurance. Oh dear, we're playing a video because on this other website. Okay, <laughs> stop that. Okay, so single user license, a USB license, network, and district. So I'm going to quickly go over those four so that you'll always know, depending on your situation, which license type you need. Single user license is meant for one person. You do get three activations. This is for, again, for that one person's use. So let's say they have a desktop and a laptop and maybe an, a, another computer that they use at work or in a computer lab at school or etc. So it's three activations for your own self. We also do offer an easy pay plan um, to spread out payments over 6 or 12 months with the single user license. 
a USB license. This is still meant for one person, but some people need ZoomText on more than three computers. Let's say you have, you know, your, your schedule of classes, you're in seven different rooms, and you have a computer in each of those rooms or there's a computer lab at school and in the library and et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of times people have uh, go with the USB license. So what this does, it lets you activate permanently using the serial number just like in that single user license on the three machines that you use most. Then you would use your USB stick for any time you need to access you know, the fourth, fifth, sixth, one hundredth computer. As long as you have administrative rights, you can use ZoomText from the USB stick. So this means you cannot just go up to a computer, say at your public library, plug it in and have it work for you. If they are, if you talk to the library and you talk to you know their IT person, they might allow you to do this. Essentially, we just need to install the ZoomText trial on the computer because it can't just run off of the USB stick. So once you do that, the very first time you go up to a machine, any other time you go up to that machine and you plug in your USB stick, it will just automatically work for you and ZoomText will start up. So you sometimes just need to have a conversation with, with somebody um, if you don't have admin rights. It does actually save your settings to the stick itself. So whenever you plug that in, it's, it's the exact settings that you want ready to go. And we do have single user and multi-user pricing available. So sometimes schools like to go with the USB version, but they like, you know, they have, let's say, 15 different students who need one. So there is multi-user pricing. A network license is designed for organizations that have five or more ZoomText users who all are working within a single network. So ZoomText can be installed on any computer in that network, even if there's a thousand computers. So this way, students or anyone can use any available workstation. They're not restricted to, you know, I have to make sure I use my specific computer. Essentially, let's say there's a thousand computers on that network, and you own a five-user license. That's the smallest network license that we have. So five people can be using ZoomText at the same time. When person number six goes to use it, they get an error message because there's not enough licenses to have six people using it at once. This license is scalable in packs of five, so you can add additional users at any time. So it's a, it's a really easy to maintain for IT staff or whoever does your license management. Lastly, a district license is again designed for organizations that have five or more users, but in this case, they work beyond the bounds of a single network. So sometimes a college campus, not every computer is on the network. So this is a good way to provide access to a wide range of people, but not limiting you to, you have to be on the same network. So if you have a 40 user district license, you can install and activate it on exactly 40 computers. So in this case, if you had, let's say, a big computer lab, this might be a nice situation for that. And again, it is scalable in packs of five. This is also a nice way for teachers or trainers who are on the road. Let's say they visit multiple schools and they need to take ZoomText with them. So obviously, they're not going to be connected to the network when they're doing that. So this is a nice way to accomplish that. Okay, number 10, the differences between ZoomText Camera and ZoomText Image Reader. These are companion products to ZoomText. ZoomText Camera is using an inexpensive webcam, so this makes for an affordable CCTV alternative. So you can zoom in on, let's say you have um, a newspaper article, and you can zoom in on it, you can apply a color filter to that printed newspaper, you can also, it has a very bendy um, arm and stand, so if you were trying to view the newspaper, which is relatively flat, or maybe let's say you have a cereal box that you're trying to read the nutrition information, you can move that arm so that it can, it's very flexible, and you can zoom in on and easily read a wide array, array of items. Now this does not let you take pictures, 
and it does not do any reading. ZoomText Image Reader, you get a different kind of a camera. It's an HD document camera. You get a custom-made positioning mat with it. This product does let you take a picture of that newspaper, and it will actually read it to you. So it takes a picture and reads it. So it's not meant for visually reading something. So you don't zoom in on something and then try use your eyes to read. This will read aloud to you. Okay? You can also read files, what's in your clipboard, areas on the screen, but um, the main difference um, is certainly it allows you to read um, anything that you can take a picture of. Okay, so we're about halfway through, so I'm trying to <laughs> speed this up a little bit here. So we're going to go back to our live demonstration and go through the next five settings in ZoomText that are very handy. Okay, so let's all insert, turn Zoom ourselves text back on. Enabled. Okay, so let's say, I'm going to pull up my toolbar here. Let's say I really like ZoomText at 4X. At 4X. I like the color Inver to be invert brightness. My mouse pointer to be green. giant green, which is very large. And Reader. my typing no, echo, keys. just keys. Okay? Now, each time I launch ZoomText, now that didn't take me all that long, maybe 30 seconds to do all those settings, but we don't want to have to do that each time we start up ZoomText, or each time a student sits down to a computer. They don't want to be wasting time setting their ZoomText settings. So what you can do once you find what you like for your preferred settings, go up to the File menu, File, and choose Open Save as Default. default. Save as default. Zoom text tin. Are you sure you want to save the current Zoom text settings as your default settings? So you would just hit yes. Then the next time you open up Zoom text, this is exactly the view that you would get. All of these things would be saved for you, and it will. You don't need to do any fiddling. Okay. If you ever get stuck and somebody has done all sorts of changes and you just want to get back to the factory settings. Just go to File, File. Restore Default. Restore Zoom Text Tin. Are you sure? Zoom Window Full. So here we are. Back at the default settings, which is at 2x. Magnifier. Certain other settings are turned on as well. Okay, the next thing is transferring activations. So remember how I mentioned with the single user products, you get three activations. And same with the district, you get a certain number of activations. So. When you or a student no longer needs ZoomText on a particular computer, let's say they're, they're done, they've graduated school, and they're not in your school anymore, so you don't need it on a certain computer, all you do is go up to Help, Help. Transfer Software Transfer License. Transfer Software License. Dot, dot, user Account Control. And say yes to that. ZoomText. Transfer ZoomText Software. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do this because it will actually, ZoomText will stop working on me here, which won't be good for the rest of our demo. Um, but this, it's very easy. You just hit that transfer button and <coughs> follow the instructions on the screen. And once you successfully transfer, it's no longer um, a valid license on this computer. So this is a really nice way to be able to sort of check licenses in and out. Maybe somebody only needs it for a couple of weeks at a time. So this is a nice way to manage your activations. Zoom okay. text user. So today I've been going over a lot of hotkeys, and you might be wondering, well, where can I actually see all of these and so I can learn them? Or what if there's one that's causing problems with another application that I use, and how can I change one of these hotkeys that Zoom text has? Okay? So there's several ways you can do this. If you go to settings, settings. scroll down to hotkeys. 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 Hot. So in this list here, it's every single hotkey in ZoomText. There are a lot of them. Just so you can actually sort of narrow it down. Maybe you're just looking to back. change one of the background reader ones. So here are all the ones associated with back reader, background reader. Um, oh, excuse me. So in here, what you can do is you can view the hotkey. BGR so current. For background reader to read the current word, I can see that it's caps lock, control, space bar. All three of those pressed together, it will read the current word. You can choose to disable that hotkey. 
you can change it. You can just say, you know what, I'm going to have it be this instead. Maybe it's conflicting with a special program that you have, and you can just easily change it right there. You can also, again, always restore defaults. If somebody's gone in and made all kinds of changes and none of the hotkeys that you know are working, this is a good way to sort of get yourself back on track. Okay, we're going to cancel out of that. Another place that you can find and review the hotkeys is within the printed user manual that comes with your ZoomText. It's a pretty large book, a um, couple hundred pages long. You can also find it online. So if, let's say you've misplaced it or, you know, it's hard to read Navigation. the manual, you just go to our website. 3.gotlmetimg.com. Click on Support Sup and Documentation. Documentation. So on this page, um, there's a variety of different versions of ZoomText um, soft documentation on here, ZoomText Mac. I mean anything that you could possibly need. There's international versions as well. And we offer a Word format or PDF for most of our um, documentation on this page. The other way that you can review them is going to the Help System in ZoomText, which can be found by going to the Help menu help. and Zoom choosing text help. ZoomText Help. It's about ZoomText 10. So this is the contents. It's basically like the user manual, um, slightly different. But um, you can click on the hotkeys hot chapter. Hotkeys expanded. And you can hot look at dial, zoom all text of them in here. So you're right within Zoom Text, and you can go ahead and, and read through. And like I said, there's a lot. <laughs> so um, you know, again, just knowing even a few of the hotkeys can really speed along your your day. So you might want to just commit to memory, you know, a good handful, and when you have time, learn about the other ones that that can help you as well. Okay, the Zoom. next thing I want to talk about is how you can bring up the Zoom Text toolbar. Sometimes you just don't remember the hotkey, or you just want to bring that up so that you can play around with some of the settings. So there's several ways you can do this. You can use your mouse and go down to your taskbar here and just click on that black and yellow Z. Zoom Text user inter And that brings it up for you. Documentation. You can also, if you remember the hotkey, which is Control Shift. U for user interface. Zoom text user and interface. Is. And this will let you adjust. You know, pretty much all the visual features are in the magnifier tab. All the speech related reader. functions are in the reader tab. And um, there's a couple additional tools here, like background reader and recorder are in the tools tab. Okay. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is we're at number 15, in case anybody is uh, keeping track here, is configuration files. So this you might think is a little more advanced, but let's say you have a student who their eyes really change throughout the day, and in the morning, you know, they're not as tired, so maybe 2x works for them. And by the end of the day, by those more afternoon classes, they are just really struggling and would like you know, they need different settings. Maybe they need 4X. Maybe they need the color enhancements turned on. So a nice way to make this easy upon yourself is to set a configuration file. So let's say that in the morning you like blue dye, blue dye and 2X and your yellow mouse pointer. You'd go up to File, file. Save, oh, configuration, save Configuration, and you want to name it something that you'll remember. So, morning. Morning. Okay. I'm going to hit save. Zoom text to now. Maybe in the afternoon. No. Nope. Reverse invert brightness. This is better for you. And you really need 4x. And we're going to put normal. that on a normal mouse pointer. So I would go up to file. File. Save, save configuration. File name morning IZ. Afternoon. Five. Afternoon. Zoom okay. text to zoom. Now, what I can do is either go up file. to the file and do an open, open configure, configuration. File name, ZXC. And open up Morning Eyes. Z zoom window and here I am back at that blue 2X. And then again, I can switch it to the, to the afternoon. You can also assign a hotkey. So if I go back to settings, hotkey. Hotkey, hotkeys, hotkey and group, I choose background reader, configuration. configuration. So if I want to load, load configuration, configuration one. 1, which is, I'm going to say my morning, which is set to, OK? 
Okay. So if we, if we do browse, name, let's make sure. Hmm. Where did that go? Hmm. <laughs> Where did those go that I just browse? See. Hold on one second. Let's do. Open. Save file name morning IZ. Save default. Okay. So let's go. Zoom to settings, hotkeys, configuration one. We're going to do config default shell view morning eyes browse and now when I press alt shift one it's going to switch me to morning eyes so I'm going to hit OK for that actually let's do afternoon eyes with this one you just have to know where it saved it so it's put it in the config default browse okay, so now that's going to be alt shift hotkey can load configuration two okay so I'm going to hit OK zoom text now if I press alt shift two Well, that should have worked. Let's try that again. <laughs> Go back into hot hot, hot key. Load configuration two. Huh. I'm not sure why that's not. Zoom starting. text chooser in. Hmm. Well, that's tricky. I'll have to look into that. But I do know that if you can assign a hotkey to one of the configurations, that it's not a really nice way to be able to switch in between them. Um, so I'll have to look into that. Another nice way, uh, another nice use of configuration files is if you have a, a lot of different students who are multilingual. So let's say your configuration one is for your English, and then you set up one for Spanish, you set up one for German, and then you can easily and quickly switch between so that the user interface is presented in the language that's appropriate to the student or client that you're working with. Okay, let's put our defaults back on Save here. Zoom text team are Zoom window full. And switch myself back to this PowerPoint. Okay, so we're going to go over five more settings, and then we are going to open this up for questions. So let's get right on back to our Zoom text here. Zoom text enabled. Okay. Number 16 is application settings. So this is slightly different than configuration files. What this is, is let's say when, whenever Yeti you're in Word, set. it's really helpful for you to have color. color enhancements on. Because it just makes it easier. That white background just is glaring to your eyes. So if I, every time I'm in Word, I really would like that to be turned on. If I go to Zoom Text, I see that the application that I'm working with is Microsoft Word. You want to make sure that this is the application you're trying to save settings to, okay? Then what you're going to do is open the file menu, file. And choose Save Application save Settings. Zoom Text 10 Save Application save set, yes. Zoom Text User Interface. And that's done. Now, if I switch and let's say I open up Firefox, Zoom text user interface. It turned off those color filters. It would turn off anything else that I had specifically asked to come on in Word. So this can be a nice way to just automate some setting changes for yourself, is to use application settings for all the different um, programs that you find your, yourself using and changing settings of, of Zoom text throughout the day. So maybe in Firefox, you need things a little bigger because things just tend to be smaller there. So if I use the hot key, which is Control shift s Zoom text 10 save application. Uh, and we want to save that for Firefox. A name edit box. So now whenever I'm in Firefox, my zoom level will be a 3x. When I'm in Word, zoom I'll text switch to Word. Get, get zoom text user interface. Shrink it down to 2x, turn on my color filters, and now I'm good to go. And I don't need to do anything further. It just does it for me. You can always um, go to the file menu. Let's bring up our Zoom. user interface. File, Fine. manage Man. application settings, and you can always disable, delete, um, or turn something back on in here as well. Okay. Zoom text user interface. Another one that's very handy for everyone, teachers, um, especially family members of somebody using Zoom text, 
or when you're using ZoomText yourself. So when you turn on the computer and you're visually impaired, you don't want to have to to try to find Zoom text and, and launch it so that you can see. You just want it to start. As soon as you start the computer, you want it turned on. So if you go to the settings menu settings. and go down to program, and pro preferences. the start very Zoom. first option in the program preferences is start Zoom text automatically when the system starts. So depending on your situation, you might really want this on or you might really want it off. Um, another handy thing in this dialog box is to be able to start ZoomText from a hotkey. So if you would, you know, let's say your spouse would really prefer that you don't have ZoomText come on all the time if they're not visually impaired, okay? But you want to have a quick way to start your ZoomText. Just check this. Start Zoom text for and then when you press key. Control shift alt z I know it's a lot of keys all at once, but they are all kind of clumped together on the keyboard then you can start your ZoomText up. So I'm going to hit OK on Zoom. that. I'm going to quit ZoomText. Zoom and we're going to give that a try. So let's say you're on your desktop and it's hard to find things when, when you can't see them. But if you know where those keys are, Control-Alt-Shift-Z, there we go. Our ZoomText is starting up for us. Okay, number 18 is adjusting how much ZoomText is speaking. So for a lot of people, Zoom text, um, Zoom text might be too chatty. It might be just telling them way too much information. For other people, they really, if their vision is worsening um, and they just need more audio cues, then they might want Zoom text to read more to them. So if we go into our reader tab here, reader. This button that's labeled verbose, which is a um, abbreviation for verbosity, which really just means how much is Zoom text talking? And by default, we do have it on expert. So what that means is it's going to speak less than if you were to choose beginner. beginner. With beginner, it's going to give you more hints. It's going to give you more, um, like, let me show beginner. you here. So if I have this on beginner, when I open up a file. File menu open. Open configuration dot 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 for shortcut use O. So it likes to tell you the shortcuts so that you will try to learn the shortcuts so that you can, you know, eventually get to the point where you can launch things faster than maybe you'd want to switch the verbosity, verbosity. when you feel like you've graduated from beginner. You might want to switch it to intermediate or expert. expert. And you can also, if you go into settings Setting. here, these are the three sort of pre-programmed levels. If you're on beginner, beginner. everything Speak is going to be spoken to you. But if you're on expert, but let's say you still really wish that alerts were spoken, you can go in here and customize exactly what is and what isn't spoken out loud. Zoom. If you ever want to interrupt Zoom text speaking entirely, you can just hit the control key. So let me just <laughs> Woo, let me just sneeze. Uh, let me just show you what I mean by that. Reader text. So I, I hit the control key and it didn't finish reading to me this whole line of text processing. So anytime ZoomText is talking and you just want it to stop, control key immediately stops talking. All right, we only have two more tips to go. All right, editing the ZoomText dictionary. Does ZoomText ever pronounce things really strangely for you? Like for instance, I'm going to open up a Word document. Get it. See how that application Document. settings change on me. Um, my boyfriend's last name is Lichtenfels. Lichtenfels. Now it doesn't quite pronounce that right. It's not a very easy word to pronounce. So you know, a lot of people have last names that it just doesn't pronounce it right. Okay. So there is a way to fix this. So if you go into ZoomText, you go to Reader. Reader menu at the top, and you choose the first one, synthesizer. Dot, dot, dot. synthesizer. Enable you want to click on options. options. And what you want to do in here, so these are all the pre-programmed um, kind of modifications that we did for this, so that it pronounces things like AI squared, our company name, correctly. So what you can do is add a word. So I'm going to open, add word. click add Source. word. I'm going to type the last name. Target. And now in target, this is where you want to 
input the phonetic spelling. So it's kind of like Lichtenstuhls. <laughs> That's how it should pronounce it. Now what you can do is hit the read button. Read fells. Lichten fells. So that's better. It's certainly better than it did. Lichten fells. Okay, it's not quite Target right. Lichten fells. Let's try that. Lichten fells. Lichten fells. Ten. Let's see. Target Lichten I. Better. Lichten fells. Lichten fells. That's pretty good. So once I'm happy with it, if it's better than it was, then I hit OK. Lichten fells. Better. So um, if I hit close, user Dick Eng save changes to Dick. I want to save Set that. So the next time I'm in here, to Fools. it pronounces it better. Um, again, you might have to play around with it a little bit in that phonetic spelling um, to get it to pronounce something really exactly how you want it. Um, but there is definitely a way to always adjust how Zoom Text talks. I mean, something like your last name, picture how many times that will occur in documents and things, and it will just be annoying. <laughs> I'm mispronouncing your name all the time. Okay, so number 20 of our top 20, we made it, guys, <laughs> um, is where to get help when you need it. So um, there's several things that I want to make sure you're aware of. Um, first was that help system that we looked at earlier. So if we open up Zoom Text, let's close out of that here. If we go to the help menu. Help. The very Zoom first thing, help. Zoom Text Help, and this opens Zoom up windows. the Zoom Text Help system, and there's tons of great information in here. Let's just say you forget how to, you know, how I can magnification do features. monitors, and that can be something a little tricky to set up. So this is very helpful tool for you, and it's all it's just built right in for you. So anytime you need it, you can access it. Another thing is our support team here in Vermont. We offer free support for ZoomText always, even if you are still running a trial. So you can call us at 802-362-3612. We are here Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We are also available by email, which is support at aisquared.com. Additionally, I'm going to open up our website. On Zoom text user interface. Search or enter address. Page so loaded IIS 7. Search or enter address. Okay, on our website, page loaded. if you click the learning tab at learning. the top, page loaded there AI. are a lot of things on here that can help you. We have Zoom Text University. These are paid in-person trainings. Um, they're two-day courses that go over Zoom Text really, really in-depth. It's a great um, a great tool. We've got some great trainers out there that can um, that are providing classes all throughout the country. So there's definitely probably something near-ish to where you are. We also, as you know, since you're here today, we offer free online webinars that you can sign up for. We also have recorded free sessions. Live. So Page all loaded. of the ones that we've ever recorded. given, we post here on the recorded Zoom content full. page. So I mean, there are tons of videos on this page. probably going to take a minute to load because there are so many videos on here. Um, but there are these, and they're just YouTube um, recordings, so you can watch them at your own convenience. And there's, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot to learn. <laughs> some are on our companion products, some are on Zoom Max. There's tons of stuff here. Another great resource is our blog, which you can also get to at the top of our homepage, blog, blog tab. There are great tips and tricks videos. Um, so these are tricks. shorter than webinars, but there's lots of them um, listed here that we give on all of our different products. So they're you know usually just a few minutes long, and you Preview. can really learn how to use you know specific features that maybe you don't even know exist. Like maybe you're wondering what is view mode and what is view locator. This is a really you know quick. It's probably like Zoom three text. or four minutes long. And um, let's see how long it is. Yep, three minutes, 15 seconds. And you'll know exactly how to use that view mode, which is a really handy tool. Um, the last thing I do want to tell you is we Search have or enter our YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash AI squared. This is where every video um, that we have is here. So this is, let's not actually play this for you. Okay. Zoom. Um, 
So there are our webinars, tips and tricks, everything is located here on our YouTube page. So this is a great, uh, great resource as well. So I know that that was a, an awfully lot of information, and I'm very appreciative of your patience and listening to my presentation here. Um, I do want to just thank you very much, and I'm, I am going to open this up for questions. Um, because there are a relatively high number of people in here today, I may not be able to just unmute everyone because it might just with the background noise, it might be very loud. Um, so there is a, a raise hand button um, that if you press that, I will certainly unmute you. And I can try to unmute um, anyone else. I'll, I'll try that in a second to see if it's just too loud. Um, I'm going to just peer at the questions panel now to see if anyone wrote in any questions during the webinar. Let's see. We have a question from Mark. He says, I am curious if any of the reader features like app reader or background reader can read punctuation for editing purposes, such as reading out when a comma or quotation marks are. That is a really, really great question. So I'm going to switch us back to the text for a minute. Okay. Oh, I've got too many. I've got two mice, two keyboards. It's <laughs> to keep track of all my uh, Zoom text equipment. enabled. Okay. File. So if I pull up Zoom text and go reader. to reader synthesizer, and synthesizer, synthesizer again. enable speech. Okay. Pretty sure. Text, text. text processing. Um, yes. So right here in punctuation, you can have it speak all punctuation. Um, you can have it just do according to synthesizer settings, which Synthes I'm trying to think what that exactly means. Op, English user dictionary editor. File open. I think user if you want that sheet. to, to uh, read aloud certain things to you, if you Speak do this, all punctuation checked. let's just Zoom see how that works. Um, let's open up that Gettysburg address. Zoom text user interface. And we're going to start app reader right here great on the word civil, great and see what it does. Great Civil War testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on it. Now, it didn't read it there, and I wonder if that had to do with... Settings. Reader. Syn synthesizer. Enable text processing. Yeah, I think that was because we had set application settings. So let me pick Speak All speak Punctuation, all punctuation Zoom Text to and that's really a special case. Um, if we didn't have that application setting, it would have just worked fine. But we had actually set specific settings for Word. So if something was turned off when you did that set application settings, um, it's going to you know, take all of those with, you, with it as well. So Getty. let's try that again and see if that reads uh, the punctuation for us. Great Civil War comma testing whether a nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure period. We are met. Okay, I'm gonna escape. So that that answers that. So you just have to you just have to make sure you're not in an application setting scenario and um, it will read punctuation to you. Again, that is something that um, we have turned off by default just because, you know, I, I would say most people probably for the most part, probably don't want to hear comma, period, quotation. But like you said, for editing purposes, that's really handy. So um, there's definitely a way to do that. OK, let's see here. Did anybody raise their hand? Let's see. I don't see any raised hands yet. Um, hopefully, you all can see where that button is. Um, I did have another question by Philip. And he said, is there a way? of showing a PowerPoint with Zoom Text enhancements on laptop, normal video on projector? That is a great question. And yes, you can do that. Um, right now, I don't know if I have, let's see, let's switch back over to my Zoom Text and see if I can actually show this to you. I don't want Zoom to um, enabled. mess up Zoom. my webinar settings in here too Magnifier. much, but Magnifier. if you go to Magnifier, Reader. Tools, settings, 
trying to think Access. where the dual monitor File. settings are. A magnifier. Magnification dot dot dot. Magnification. Power. Window. Full check. Yeah, here we go. So if we had enabled our dual monitor support. Enable. Oh, boy. En enable. Zoom text dual monitor. Do you see a yellow okay. quote? We're going to that off. Yes. Oh, boy. Hopefully that did not just. Um, Zoom text user interface. Kill the webinar. Um, hopefully you can see this. Uh, I had a funny feeling it was going to mess up the webinar here. But um, essentially, when you turn dual monitor on, there are three different. Let me just see if I can shut this off and it'll it'll come back for me. Oh boy. Um, hmm. Hopefully you all can still hear me, but I can't see the <laughs> go to webinar interface anymore. Um, but basically, the the primary no, with one enabled. X view. What that is, is on your primary, quote unquote, primary machine, so that would be like the laptop that you hook up to the projector, that's where you can see all of your Zoom text settings and your magnification, color enhancements, everything, and the what you're outputting to everyone is 1x, so normal. Um, so the primary 1x view is meant for just that purpose, so when someone needs Zoom text who's presenting information and doesn't want to show it to their audience, primary with 1x is the way to go. I'm going to see if I can hopefully um, Zoom. get <laughs> Zoom text ten to you. Get my uh, display back here. I hope. <laughs> oh goodness! I knew that was going to happen. Um, okay, let's see here. Um, well. I'm not sure what I can do here at this moment. I might be able to log into the webinar on this machine. Let's try to um, here we go. Oh my goodness, that was a frightening moment. <laughs> So hopefully you can still see all of this, um, and that answers your question. Does anyone have any other questions for me today? And this is um, being recorded, so I am going to put this up on that recorded webinars page that we looked at earlier, so you will be able to view this at, at, at any time, and I will certainly also be emailing that document that I had mentioned to everyone that has all of those top 20 <clears throat> tips, very, um, it's like a 10-page document. I, I made sure I included all of the information that you need, all those hot keys that I talked about, all of that stuff is, is in the document. Um, I think what I will do, since I don't see any hands raised and I don't see any additional questions, is I'm going to try to unmute everyone and just uh, see if this isn't horrible. Okay, so um, I'm in the process of unmuting, but if anyone has any questions, you can feel free to just speak up and I should be able to hear you. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of feedback going on. I'm going to mute everyone again. Okay, that was there's like over 20 people in here, so it's um, it's just a little bit a little bit too chatty here um, with the background noise. But um, if you do have any questions and you can't find that questions um, interface or the chat window there, you can always send an email to learning at ai squared.com. That will go to the webinar staff, and we are more than happy to help you and get you the answer that you need. Um, I will keep this open for another minute or so. If I see any questions pop up, I'll certainly answer them. Um, but I do want to thank everyone again for coming. I hope you enjoyed this webinar, and hopefully it, it wasn't too much information. I did really <laughs> try to, to cram in a lot of different variety of you know features and settings and, and different things that that will be helpful for back to school and for, for teachers and, and for anyone really who who's a Zoom Text user. So 
do let me know if you have any additional questions or um, you can go ahead and, and exit the webinar and um, like I said, I'll be here for another minute or so. You're welcome, Deanna. Thank you for coming to the webinar. All right. Um, doesn't appear that there will be any, any questions. So again, like I said, if you're having any troubles, just send an email to learning at AISquare.com and I can get you an answer um, later this afternoon. And just keep an eye on that recorded page. Um, hopefully that will be up tomorrow. So if you did want to share that with any of your fellow teachers or colleagues, um, you can certainly do so. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your day.